the tournament director at the time at the meeting was on the mic and he called my name. He said, Michael Iconelli, Runnymede, New Jersey, and, and you know, you're, you, I remember being like nervous. I'm like, oh my God, you know, here, here it goes. Tommy Biffle, Wagner, Oklahoma. Oklahoma's Tommy Biffle, considered by his peers to be one of the best, if not the best, flipper on the tournament trail, ranked fifth in classic qualifying this year. And dude, I was so excited because, you know, Tommy Biffle was one of those guys I've read about. When I got back that summer, I had a chance to enter again in 1994, and this time I got to enter two events again. Same thing. I only had enough money to put in for two. I figured if I got picked for both of them, I think it was $300 at the time, maybe $400 to compete. It's a lot of money for a college kid. And I remember putting in for two of them, and one of them was Lake Norman again. The other one, I can't even remember where it was at. It was a little closer, and I was excited to fish either one. I got the letter back for the one. I didn't get in. I got the second letter back, and it said, congratulations, you have been selected to compete at Lake Norman again. You know, um, getting picked again to compete as an amateur and, ha and getting to go back to Lake Norman. You know, I was a little disappointed, but a little excited at the same time because I felt like having seen the fishery, having fished with four amazing guys, now I was going to be a little more prepared. It's going to have the right baits. I knew what to be prepared for, right? So I got picked again. I got drawn again. And this time I got down there. I was more relaxed. I wasn't as nervous. And I remember getting my draws for the week. And my four draws for that week were um, day number one. This is funny because I got drawn with him before, Cliff Craft. Day number two, Carl Maxfield. Day number three, Guido Hibden. Day number four, Chet Dalfit from Florida. And it was a great list of pros. And I really, I went into this pro-am event as an amateur with a different mindset you know yes wanting to learn but in this one man i was i was driven to to want to win on the first day drawing cliff craft the good news is i caught a few the bad news is i was sitting about middle of the pack but the second day fishing with carl maxfield we really started, I really started to get into my element and we fished around some docks. I learned enough from Biffle the year before that I had a one-two punch of skipping a jig and fishing a little shaky head worm behind Carl. And on the second day, I came in with enough weight, a five fish limit to move all the way up to first place. Man, I was stoked, I was excited, but I still had two days left. The second day, I draw out with Guido, and fishing with Guido was intimidating because Guido was really one of my heroes. Guido, you're running. We fished a top water in the morning, and I think I caught one, and I think he caught two, and then it really flattened out. And I remember going a really long, long time with Guido, and we only had those three fish. I had one, he had two. I remember it being late, like only a couple hours left, and he moved to fishing around docks, but he was fishing like way out in front of him and you could barely reach the dock with a cast. He it, it was fishing them different. But I remember looking down in the water with Guido and seeing Shad swim by, and they were like in a school. And I remember seeing that bait, and I'm, I'm thinking, man, I, I, I was big in, 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 into matching the hatch. And I remember tying on a lure at the time that was called 
a finesse fish. And it was basically by a company, it was like a sluggo. It was by a company called uh, Lunker City, Herb Reed. And I had this finesse fish and it looked just like those shad. I remember putting it on a little offset hook and just start twitching it around. And from, from having one to before we had to leave, I remember catching three more fish. So I came in with four that day and I was able to maintain my lead on the amateur side. The bad news is I had a couple other amateurs that caught them really good. And I think I was only leading by like a pound or less than a pound gone into the last day. Man, the last day I drew out with, uh, with Chet Dalfit, and it was just one of those days where everything you did was right. It was like every move he made, I changed lures and caught him. I caught one on a top water. I caught one on a spinner bait. I caught a couple on a rattle and lipless spot, uh, a Cordell spot. Then I caught a couple on a jig. I caught a couple on a shake it. It was one of those magic days. And you know, I caught a really big limit that day. I came in and I won the tournament. It was my first experience with a national win. I gotta tell you, it was unexpected. Uh, not only was it like unexpected for me, but on that trip, I went down with my uncle. Yeah, my uncle at the time drove a van. And the funny thing is, he didn't have a hitch on the van. So, you know, wait a minute. It's like first place in the tournament is a fully rigged Ranger boat. Ranger trail trailer, a Ranger 360V full custom bass boat with electronics. It had a Johnson 150 fast strike outboard on the back. Dude, it was amazing. It was this great first place prize. We have no way to tow it home. I remember like, you know, having Ray Scott, who was the Waymaster, you know, congratulate me and give me my plaque and hand me the keys to this boat. And I was thinking, how the heck, how the heck are we getting this thing home? And, but all of a sudden I look at my uncle and my uncle was kind of smiling because that day while I was fishing, and this is, I have no idea he did this. He had so much confidence in me that he took his van to like a U-Haul place and he had a hitch installed. Dude, it's crazy to think about that, to think that my uncle had enough confidence in me that I would win that he had a hitch installed. So, dude, it was an unbelievably exciting time to, to tow that boat back to New Jersey. I think I just kept turning my head looking back at it. That night when we parked it at his house, uh, we parked it in his driveway. I literally slept in it that night. I think it was like May, right? It was like May, it was spring. I slept in the boat, I was so excited. But, you know, winning that boat um, as, as a young man in college still, it was the next big thing for me that changed my life. It, gave me um, confidence. It gave me a little taste of national exposure. And more importantly, it gave me a real bass boat that was going to allow me to get to the next level. Heard you had a bad day, it ain't going your way, yeah Never give up Heard my life was a movie, I got people trying to use me I will never give up It's not about where you at, it's about where you headed And all the things they say about you only hurt if you let it I gotta put on for the kids, cause they getting the message I'm on my knees, thank you Look at all of my blessings Look at little old me doing real big things From a real small town, I'ma make them all proud And these kids need a leader, I'ma show them all how Anybody in my way, then we gon' mow them all down Hey, front of Garden State, I got some deep roots Fisherman drip with some new boots I almost didn't make it, that's the real truth They call me the general, I got real juice Pull up in a bass cat, doing donuts When I'm at the classic, the people go nuts 
Heard you had a bad day. So it ain't going your way. So yeah. What? Never give up. Heard my life was a movie. I got people trying to use me. I will never give up. You know, about the same time, I also decided to start fishing the Red Man tournaments. And so this was great because, you know, as a junior and senior in college, um, these tournaments for the most part were local, right? The New Jersey Federation, they were all within the state of New Jersey. The Redmans went a little bit north and south. I went as far north as Champlain, as far south as the Potomac River. Um, but it kept me local and let me really start to learn the next level of fishing, right? To go from being a club John boat fisherman to, to competing in, in this big boat, in these bigger events. And, you know, it's interesting when I look back on it, it's like everything that happened in my fishing career, right? It's almost like it was stair step. And, you know, when I first started competing in this big boat, I didn't do any good, you know, in 96, I didn't do that good in the Federation or Redman's. 97, I did a little bit better. And I remember, you know, in 1997, I remember catching my first limits in tournaments. 